Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. Today I'm gonna do an updated favorite art supplies video. I did one before and you can find it in my channel but it's been a while since then and I've painted a lot more so I've updated my preferences but yeah I'm gonna start off with the little tools that I use the very first one is my pencil extender which is something that I use when I've used uh, my pencils too much and they're too small for me to handle comfortably this just helps me get as much use as i can out of them this one doesn't have a brand it's really just an extender in its most basic form another one is my pencil sharpener and this is a crank mechanical sharpener i really like using this i think it's very therapeutic i've it still works the same it's kind of not as heavy as the last one the last one was hbw and i think i might prefer that one more just because it was heavier and it's easier for me to hold it down when i'm sharpening my pencils the next thing i want to talk about is my palette knife i think the brand is called lucas and i really like using this for when i'm mixing my acrylics with my matte medium and sometimes when i'm mixing my oil, pa oil paints although i don't do that that much it's one of those things that i didn't really realize that i would have references for but after using very stiff palette knives um, i just really noticed the joy in something that's very flexible and strong like this one the next things are my erasers and really I just went back to this black one and unfortunately I still don't have a name for it. I lost the packaging and, and I've had it for years so it doesn't wear down that much but I will be putting down names for what I think the eraser is in the description. I sort of just stopped using those fancy, very detailed erasers and just went back to this. Um, a big part of it is because I haven't really done a lot of very detailed drawings and was just doing a lot of paintings this year so maybe it's that another thing i want to talk about is my masking fluid and i do want to give a shout out to my lefranc graphic gum which i have used years before the thing about it is that it doesn't have an applicator so i had to use my brush for it but that thing peeled off really beautifully and it was also just thick enough for me to lay it down without any problems and for me to find it without any problems when it's time to peeling it i just can't leave masking fluids off of this video because it's something that i really enjoy using so now i want to talk about the papers that i love and the very first one is this watercolor stone book from SMLT Art. I think this thing is gorgeous, but not only that, I love the paper that's inside. It's pure cotton and it's cold pressed, but it's also not just too textured that it's a pain to sketch on it. I just think that the texture on it perfect is just the perfect in between, between being too rough that it's hard to sketch with and not being too smooth that it would make your watercolor be hard to control on top of it the next one is my handbook journal and it's about to retire soon but i really like i really loved using this one i love the paper on it as well it's great to sketch with it's also a little bit textured but again it's just the perfect kind of texture that it would feel great to, to use your pencils on top but it's not just sanding away at them I also think it's the perfect size, it's 5x5 five five, and so it's good for small paintings and drawings. Another one is my Cotman super smooth watercolor paper and I love using this actually for gouache and acrylics and that's because it's just so smooth that my paint will just lay across it very beautifully even with my tiny brushes. Um, sometimes I find it hard to do that with some of my watercolor sketchbooks. I do want to give a shout out to my Bao Hong watercolor sketchbook, which I haven't used in a while, but I really love how affordable it is, and it's also pure cotton paper, so if you guys are looking to try out cotton paper that's not too expensive, that one is also a great option. Now I want to talk about the things that I love to sketch with, and this is always the star of every sketch that I make, and it's my flex stick red ballpoint pen. I love sketching with this because it just gives me a wide range of line weight 
when you draw with it from at an angle you can get softer looking lines with them so it's nice to shade with and i can't do that with a lot of my gel pens i don't think i also love just sketching with red pens because i think that it's not it doesn't give me as much pressure to get it right unlike unlike some of my darker ink pens and the next one is my prismacolor very thin pencils I just am so in love with these. I love sketching with them. They should just feel like pencils. They're not like a lot of colored pencils where they're just too soft to sketch with. This one I can sharpen up to a really fine point, but also I can shade with this like a regular pencil. And they also come in a lot of colors, which I like. I just mostly like using the red ones still. I also want to give a shout out to my Holbein colored pencils because I love these things so much. They're a little bit softer than my very thins, but they also that also makes them easier to blend. But I also love sketching with these as well. Um, I could sort of put them in the category of colored pencils. I think they're the perfect colored pencils because and I guess I love drawing with them and I also love coloring with them. But the very thins I just put in their pencil category because that's how they feel like when I use them. I'm gonna put all of my favorite quote unquote markers in the sketching stage because this year I haven't done a lot of marker art and when it came down to it is I really just love my highlighters. This is my Stabilo Boss highlighter and I just love using this for the shadows before I put in the sketch on top. I think it lets me have the option of really quickly shading in my sketches without it being too serious, I think. Next, I want to talk about my favorite basic pencil and it's the Mitsubishi Uni series. I really love sketching with these. It feels very... It always feels very premium. It's a little bit more he hefty than my other pencils. It almost reminds me of my Holbein pencils, but it's an actual pencil and so it's good to sketch with it. And it's also really soft. The thing about them, I mentioned in my last video, is that they can get a little bit shiny so it's hard to take photos of them, it's hard to make them be photogenic but since then I haven't really done a lot of photos and videos of them I just put, the, I just use them for my sketches and then do my paintings on top so this year it hasn't mattered as much now I want to talk about the things I used to ink with and since the last time I've, this is one other thing that I also haven't done a lot since I made my last video and so I've really just narrowed it down to what I love. The first one is my Tombow brush pen. Honestly, I just love how the brush feels. And it's just soft enough for it to be flexible, but it's also not just too soft. I do want to keep in mind that I don't know if this is archival. I don't know how this will age, but I really just love it for what I use it for. The next thing is my Pilot Cheetah pen. And I hate shading with these because the lines are just so consistent. But that is also what makes it lovely to ink with and not only that it just glides on top of your paper i love that about it the ink just constantly flows it's just a very predictable pen but that also is what makes it very reliable i think there was a little section on the white inks that i used in my last video and this one it's only this one thing and it's the copic opaque white and the thing about it is just it's just so opaque. I don't have any pens that are that is as opaque as this one, not even my Posca pens. So I think in the end this one becomes more the most reliable. And now I for the big things, for the big boys, I want to talk about my paints. The first thing is my watercolors. My favorite is still the White Knights, but it's all, um it's been for different reasons. I love using the white knights for my personal projects where I don't need to I don't need to film. I think the only reason why I don't like using these for filming is because it's very hard to get it in the shot with my watercolors. It's just it's just a big case. But I really just love how intense the colors are with the white knights and so they make me want to use them so much. But the next one is my Paul Rubens watercolors. These things come in tubes, but they also dry completely solid, which I love about watercolors. There are some watercolors that come in tubes that just don't dry that much, that well, um, just like, like my Sinelier watercolors, which actually I've found 
a lot of similarities between these two but I think I would prefer my Paul Rubens one more because just because they dry solid which I think it just makes them less fussy and the next one is a shout out to my Sakura Poi watercolors and especially this um, sketch box I this these are the only thing painting things that I bought with me when we evacuated and I feel like I, it's just so convenient that everything's here but also the colors on it are very intense and so vibrant that I don't feel like I would need anything else if it was in those kinds of situations so yeah I'm gonna give a shout out to those the next thing I want to talk about is my gouache and I don't think it would come as a surprise that it's just my Holbein artist squash in this video since my last one i've been painting with gouache a lot more and that's an understatement the, this one is just what i love i think it's just so pigmented that when you water them down they are what feels closest to watercolors and also i think because of the high pigment that's inside them they just don't dull out as much as other gouache. They're a big investment, I think. They are they are quite expensive, but I also feel like they are so worth it. These are probably favorite art supplies, um, along with my red ballpoint pens. The next thing I want to talk about are my acrylic paints, and I really can't choose between these two, and <laughs> these are the only two that I've used, but I just love using these together. The first one is my Liquitex Basics paints and I really like how they they are so also vibrant as well but they're not as expensive and so you can use a lot of them when you're painting and not be worried which is something that I think is what's special about acrylics is the textures you can get from painting with them and so I really would recommend these over the next one which is the golden everybody acrylics and the reason for that is because I don't really see a lot of difference between the color choices in the liquid sex and the golden but there is a big difference in their white so the colors would remain very vibrant and not dull out as easily if you use the Liquitex white so I just feel like it's so important to have high quality white in your paints and so I would recommend just the Liquitex for the other colors and get the golden heavy body acrylics in white if you can get a big tube of that because you're gonna need it now I want to talk about my oil paints it's one of those things that's weird to talk about because it's the only thing I've tried but I just loved using the Schmincke Norma oil paints. I think they're so lovely. Maybe it's just oil paints in general but I don't think colors just stay true as they are with oil paints and with any other medium. So for now maybe it's not with the brands but more about how lovely the medium is because I haven't used a lot of other brands but shout out to oil paints in general. The next art supply I want to talk about is something that is very new to me and these are oil pastels. These particular ones are from Paul Rubens and I just love these. I didn't know how great oil pastels were until I tried these. They blend so beautifully and I also really love the textures that I can get from them. I just love these so much and I can't wait to do more art stuff with them. <laughs> And now the last thing I want to talk about are my brushes and the very first one is the Art Basics 1 inch texture brush. I love this, it's firm but it's also flexible and I also love that it's very broad so it's easy to cover a lot of area especially with watercolors when you don't want those edges to dry. This next one is recommended to me by my friend Chia Perez who also has a YouTube channel in her own name. We were talking about brushes and I told her how awful these Sumi Art mop brushes are and she asked me why because she really loved them and I, t I just said it was very tack it felt really sticky and hard just the bristles and then she told me that you needed time to actually work the coating out of the bristles before they reveal how they soft they really are and I just felt like an idiot for not realizing that I didn't know that brushes actually came with those usually when I buy brushes I just go ahead and paint with them but this one is just really good it holds a lot of water and it's very soft they're just great watercolor brushes but this next one is the MVP of all paint brushes it's just 
the Giorgione brushes and these things I love using for gouache. I think one of the, the things about them is that they are so inexpensive that I can buy a lot. I know expensive brushes do age well, they age better, but with gouache and especially with acrylic gouache, which sometimes just dries on your brushes if you forget to clean them, I think it's safer to use these inexpensive brushes and they also just work really well i think they hold their point as not they're not as soft as natural hair brushes so they're great for just doing details with gouache any of their brushes that are labeled as watercolor brushes actually are great for gouache but yeah thank you guys for sticking out to the end of the video i will be seeing you again soon